Hey Jackal, today we'll make a cool looking transition just like this in DaVinci Resolve 17. Now let's get digital. The easiest way to make a transition is to go to the effects, open video transitions and choose a transition. If you want to skip one step, go below and find a fusion transition. If you don't, just pick any transition, put it onto the timeline between two clips, right click on it, convert it to a fusion transition if you didn't choose so and then open it in the Fusion page. As you can see, all of the transitions come in a group. If you want to make your own, you can simply delete this. And the thing that you want to have is two media inputs. So I'll come back to this example, but the transition that we'll be making is this one. To split the transition into smaller bits, let's see what I did. So I came into the middle of the transition applied a black and white overlay, which I've done with these two nodes. I've added an ellipse that goes from the middle till this point. I then copied this ellipse down here where I've added the prism blur effect, which is the border. I merged these two things in and I applied a dissolve. And that's basically it, except I have a time stretcher node which pauses this clip until the ellipse comes out and then it starts playing again. I wanted to make this a dynamic transition so that you could just extend it. But the issue with this is the black screen. And why is that? Well, let's take a peek. As you can see, the transition is like this. It has a bunch of red nodes, which means that something is not connected. And in this case, this ellipse doesn't have connection to the keyframe structure here and this one doesn't have it connected to here. And as you can see, I can't really put it back in. What usually works is to connect the ellipse to one of the masks, connect the keyframe stretcher in the middle, but in this case, this doesn't work, so I have no idea how to connect it easily back. Anyway, this is on DaVinci Resolve 17.2. Maybe they fixed the issue in 17.3. I'll have to check it out. But in the meantime, what you can do is to keep it simple make transitions one second, two seconds, three seconds long, and just forget about the keyframe stretcher. Now let's go back to this example. As you can see, the motorbike is the second video, so that's what we'll use as an overlay, as a foreground. So open it in Fusion page. As you can see, the motorcycle is the media in two, so this will be our foreground. So what we need now is color compressor. This will turn it to black and white. So I'll just put the saturation to full. You can also use color curves. Simply drag and adjust the position to something that you like, maybe something like that. So these will be the two nodes that we'll connect an ellipse to. So we can make an ellipse now, connect it as a mask. Because we want the black and white to be outside, we need to invert it. You also need to decide on where the starting point of the animation will be. So maybe in this case, I'll go to frame 12. I'll now put here equals to the width. You can also put equals to the height so that we can get an expression, hold the plus, drag it to the height. Or if you used equals on the height, drag the plus to the width. This means that you can now only adjust the height and both width and the height will be adjusted. So set the height or the width to zero, keyframe it, and then decide on the ending point, maybe frame 19, go all the way out, so maybe something like that. Now you will make a copy of this ellipse and paste it here for the time being. And the second thing that we'll add is the border, so this will be the border, so we can uncheck invert, uncheck solid, make a border, we'll adjust it later. To make the color border, I've used prism blur, connect the media into to the blur, mask to mask, and we'll now connect these two nodes. So make a merge node. This will be the background and this will be the foreground. So let's see what we have at the moment. We don't see anything on the merge, so we need to also connect this ellipse to the merge so that we can see it. Now I can adjust the ellipse border width. As you can see, this 
quite visible, but we need to adjust the prism blur effect. You can also apply the vignette if you want, but this will be visible towards the end of the animation. I just decided not to use it, something like that. Maybe make the border smaller, just like that. So you have this part of the animation done, but you don't have the actual switch that will do the transition. And to do that, we'll use a dissolve node. Put the dissolve here, connect the merge to the foreground, with dissolve node displayed. As you can see, we'll want to switch from foreground to background, but instantly. So to do that, we'll use an expression, type in equals. So in the dissolve node, we'll use this expression, which means the current frame. At this point, it's 10. If this one is less than half of the maximum duration of this clip, which is 23. If this is less, we'll display the background. If it's more than half, we'll display the foreground, which is the bike. And this is exactly what happens. And the last thing that we need to do is to pause the bike at this point and then continue playing the video from this point on. So now that you have this done, the only thing that we need to do is to pause the video, which is easy. The only thing that you need is a time stretcher node. Put the time stretcher node behind the media in two. Now with the time stretcher node, as you can see, it pauses the video, but it pauses it at frame zero because the animation starts at frame 12. Let's go to frame 12 and pause the frame 12. So we'll keyframe this, set it to frame 12. And we want to have this paused until, let's see, maybe this point. Make another keyframe like that. And we want to continue playing from this point on. So go to the last frame and set this to the frame that it is, so 23. So now this whole animation looks like this. Now this animation is a little bit fast because we only animate from the middle point. So if you make this transition a two second long transition, it look a lot nicer. And also if you want to make this a dynamic transition, just like I showed you before, but you'll have to make adjustments to the keyframe stretchers, what you can do is in the time stretcher node, type in equals, so you get an expression and paste this long sausage expression, which I won't go over, but what it basically does, it calculates the starting position and these two positions, and it also calculates how fast the video should play between these two points, so that it doesn't jump from frame 12 to frame 50, but it plays from frame 12 and all of the middle point frames from 12 to 50. And now to save this super awesome transition that you have, you have a couple of options. You could trim this in a group, Control G, select everything, make a macro, file save as, or save as group if you want to be able to change the settings, go to fusion, templates, edit, transitions, put it here. If you save it this way, we'll have to also delete it in this way, but you can also go back into the edit page, select the transition that you just made, right click on it and select this option. Give it a name, click OK. The transition should immediately be available. So as you can see it is, I can put it on the timeline. It works as it should, but when I extend it, this will not work because I didn't make it dynamic. So to make this fully dynamic, what you have to do in the keyframe stretcher, source start set at zero, source end will be in my case 23, because originally this was a one second long transition. And in my case, one second is, well, the frame rate of the timeline. And then what we'll also need to do is right click on the stretch start and stretch end and make an expression for both of them. The source start will be comp dot and the ending will be the end. This makes it so when you stretch the timeline or stretch the transition, this will adjust to the actual frames on the timeline. As you can see, it's now from zero to 59. But like I mentioned, you can't use this method at the moment because the ellipses or any other polygon, I would imagine, 
can be connected back to the keyframes treasure. And that's how you can make a stop and go transition in DaVinci Resolve 17.2. And if you want to download today's tutorial files, you can do so by supporting me on my Buy Me A Coffee page. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve content, and hit the bell notification icon so don't miss my next video. I'm Simon, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.